Hi everyone and welcome to this short explainer video for the debt sculpting example. If you're not sure what debt sculpting is, be sure to check out both the podcast that I've done on debt sculpting and also the blog post which explains it in detail and also how the debt service cover ratio is calculated. So let's dive into the example. Now what you'll see is that the example has three worksheets, amortizing loan, sculpted loan and then a bit of a comparison sheet so that we can compare the two. Let's have a look at the amortizing loan. So we have some inputs over here. We've got a, a loan amount of 38 million. We've got a start date of the end of June 2019. We've got a tenor of the loan of 20 years, which means that the end date will be in 2039. We've got a base rate of 4% and a margin of 4%, so an all-in rate of 8%. And we assume that our cash flow available for debt service is growing at 5% annually, so there's a 5% inflation over here. Our initial or starting cash flow available for debt service, so CFADS is the cash flow that we have available to service our debt, is 4.8 million. So let's have a look at how this works if we go down to the calculations. So we've got different periods here going all the way down. We can see that what we have here is annual date. So nice simple annual payment just for the example. So in the first period, we've got the drawdown of 38 million and then we start paying one year later, we start principal and interest payments. So what we're doing over here is we're calculating the principal payment using the PPMT formula in Excel. We're calculating how much interest has been accrued based on the time that's lapsed between the two dates. We assume that we pay all of that interest and we assume that we also have the principal payment. So we have an ending loan balance. What we've got over here is that we would have had 4.8 million. That's what the inputs are over here, 4.8 million the first year. And that's growing at 5% per annum. So we can see that our cash flow available debt service is increasing over time, according to some inflation index. Then we calculate our debt service coverage ratio. So our debt service coverage ratio, if you haven't read the blog post or listened to the podcast, it's basically our cash flow available for debt service divided by our total debt service. So it's divided by the sum of both principal and interest. So that's how we get the debt service coverage ratio. The loan life coverage ratio is what we do there is we calculate a net present value of our cash flow available for debt service and we divide that by the outstanding balance of the loan. And we are discounting our, our cash flow available for debt service at 8%, which is our cost of capital. So that makes sense to discount it at that rate for the LLCR calculation. So there we have the total loan repayment and what we can see is we've got an annuity payment here. So our interest and principal being paid will always sum to the same amount. So it's an annuity payment where each year you pay the same total amount. But as we can see over here in this graph, we can see that the interest amount is actually decreasing. So as the loan balance gets smaller, our interest amount decreases and we pay more principal. And that's how we pay off the loan. We can see our debt balance decreases over time, eventually just amortizes to zero. And we can see over here that our debt service cover ratio, which is in blue, increases over time. And our LLCR also increases over time. So why is the DSCR, or debt service coverage ratio, increasing over time? Well, it's increasing because our cash flow available for debt service is increasing over time, but our total loan payment is staying the same. So this is like a home loan repayment or a car repayment where the total amount is the same every single month or every single year until the loan is fully amortized. So that's how the example works. And we can see that the minimum debt service coverage ratio is 1.3 times. So that might be a covenant from the bank when you take out a loan. All right. Next up, we have a sculpted loan. So what you can see here is we've got the same starting cash flow available for debt service and it increases at 5% per annum. So we've got the same cash flow available for debt service and our covenant from the bank, they said you need a minimum DSCR of 1.3 times and we have that but we actually have a much higher loan amount, 47.5 million versus the 38 million. So how were we able to achieve that? Well, we were, well, we were able to achieve that by sculpting our loan repayments. So let's go and have a look at how our loan repayments look. So what you can see here is our total loan repayment actually increases over time. And then there's a, a smaller repayment in the final year, just paying off the final balance. So if you have a look at the debt service coverage ratio of the blue line, it's completely flat. We've sculpted it along 1.3 times. On the previous example, we saw that it was increasing because the cash flow available for debt service was increasing, but the total loan repayment was staying the same. You can see there the total loan repayment is a flat line. Here we can see our total loan repayment is actually increasing over time, being a combination of both interest in red and principal in blue. 
So by increasing our principle that we pay over time, we are actually able to achieve the same minimum debt service coverage ratio of 1.3 times by having a higher loan amount. And how we can achieve that is by paying a small amount of principal in the first period. And if you have a look at the principal paid in the first year, it's 76,000, or we'll round up to 77,000 versus 830,000 in this period. So using an annuity payment, we pay a much higher principal amount in the first period to sculpt at a very small amount. It's mostly interest that's being paid, and we can even see that on the graph. It's mostly red, very small blue amount starting off. And the blue amounts slowly increase over time. They increase in line typically with our cash flow available for debt service. So we can see that's how we achieve this flat line debt service coverage ratio. And what's interesting here is that we achieve the same minimum debt service coverage ratio, but whereas the previous example with the annuity payment we amortized over 20 years, by sculpting we actually amortize sooner. So we have a larger debt amount that we actually pay off sooner by sculpting. So if we go and compare this over here, we can see that our cash flow available for debt service in both examples is the gray line increasing over time, starting off at 4.8 million, increasing at 5% per annum. The annuity payment pays the same, which is the blue, pays the same for 20 years, whereas in the red, we actually see that our total loan repayments are increasing, and you can see it's in line with cash flow available for debt service. Over here, the debt service coverage ratio with a sculpted loan profile, we'll see that it's, it's flat, so it's very highly sculpted, whereas in the annuity payments, it's increasing over time. The debt balance, we can see we've got a higher debt balance that actually amortizes quicker than the blue one, which is the annuity loan profile. And the loan life coverage ratio starts off smaller, but actually increase over time, and obviously will go much higher there because we're paying off the loan at a sooner point in time. So that's how debt sculpting works. If you want more information on this, be sure to check out the blog post on the Financial Modeling Podcast website, and also check out my short stuff podcast on how debt sculpting works.